Hi there, um, I'm Michael. Today on the stream I'm going to be putting together a computer. Um, so that's putting it together, basically building it, um, installing Windows. I'm not sure if it's going to be Windows 10 or Windows 11 yet. I haven't heard back from the client on that. Um, I'll probably put Windows 11 if I don't hear from him because that's what uh, most people are going with today, uh, especially if they're gaming. Um, but yeah, we'll update the BIOS if it needs it on the motherboard and update the drivers and all that stuff. Uh, so here's the components, and there's links to these in the description of the video if you want to uh, go buy them. Hey Zulu, how you doing? So yeah, motherboard. It is a ASRock um, Velocita. Um, it's a B550 motherboard. Um, so he bought some thermal paste, which he didn't really need. Um, the, the CPU comes with it, but we'll go ahead and use this. Uh, CPU is a Ryzen uh, 5000 series 5600X 6 core CPU. Let's see. Graphics card is a Asus Dual um, 3060. OC edition, 12 gigabytes of RAM. Nice. One terabyte uh, Samsung 980 Pro M.2 NVMe solid state drive. RAM is G Skill Rip Jaws, uh, 3600 megahertz, 16 gigabytes at CL18, which is the latency. And power supply is a Corsair CX750M modular power supply. And he's got a um, Corsair 4000D airflow case over there, which I'll open up when we get there. Uh, okay, let's start with the motherboard. Put the power supply down. And the graphics card. Let me see. Will we need the graphics card? We'll need the graphics card to test it before we put it in the case. Uh, so all that stuff we're going to need pretty quickly. Motherboard. I haven't had a ASRock motherboard brought to me in a while. I like them. I've, I've always had good results with them. They tend to be a little bit cheaper than Asus, um, but in my experience, you know, very reliable. Gravity? Gravity make you come out? No? There it goes. It's a big motherboard box. Envelope with a CD and a bunch of stickers and straps. Nice. Let's see, software setup guide. Don't need that. The motherboard manual may come in handy. Let's see. That is a M.2 securing screw. At least it looks like it. And there's another one and another one. Looks like two SATA data cables and two more. We won't be using any of those. We may need that riser to put on the M.2. There's another riser. And here's some other. in the box. Okay, we're just going to set that over there on the floor. Oh, yeah. Integrated uh, IO shield. That's always nice, so you don't have to worry about putting it in. And they've strapped it to this... Uh, this foam here. And looks like you got a peel. A couple of peels.
Lopoet, how you doing? And Arnold Albert and CFW. How's everybody feeling today? Day after New Year's. Okay, peel on the face plate as well. Aha, more peel. I think I got it all. Have a motherboard box, just one I have down here. Makes it a little bit easier to put the graphics card in for testing. Um, all right, well, let's do the processor first. Processor goes right there. Hello, Emily. with a little manual and a sticker. All right, so what you do is you locate the triangle on one corner and it matches up with the triangle here on the socket. Um, pull this arm out to the side and up. So you rotate it so the triangle goes to the triangle on the motherboard and usually just drops right in. How's my angle here? Yeah, good. All right, then you can push it down. I try and use my uh, my fingernail uh, to like push down just because there's not much oil on it, whereas your finger has tons of oil sometimes. And you just push down the arm and it's installed. If there's a bunch of oil on the processor, it can make it so that the, um, the heat doesn't get transferred as well. Uh, let's go ahead and put this cooler on. So yeah, there is pre-applied thermal compound, but since they bought separate extra special thermal compound, I'm gonna scrape this off and we'll we'll use the tube they brought. Oh great, I got it on my hand. Wow, that really didn't clean off very well. That's terrible. Okay, well, let's use some use some alcohol on it. Let's see. Pour some in the cap so don't accidentally pour too much. I don't think I've ever had this much trouble getting brand new thermal compound off of a, a heat sink before. This is, this is a lot. Another dip of isopropyl. Okay, I think we just about got it. Thermal compound. Put about a pea sized amount right in the middle. Like that. And when I put the cooler on, it'll spread out. I do need to take off this uh, these brackets though. The um, the screws here will go directly into the back plate. So these need to come out. The 
somebody have a birthday on New Year's? My birthday is tomorrow. Let's see. Okay. So we'll have it go this way. So there's the back plate, and it's just little screw holes that that goes into. I'm just going to set it approximately in the right spot. And then we'll do a quick. So I'm just getting them all started right now. All right, that's on. It's kind of a weird angle with uh, with this, so I'm just going to use a screwdriver. I'm doing an equal, equal amount of turns on each one just to get it to go down kind of evenly, and that'll help to spread out the, the thermal compound. January 1st. Well, happy birthday, Emily. All right, so this is going to plug into the CPU fan. There's two here. There's CPU fan 1 and CPU fan 2. Um, you can plug it into either one. I'll go with CPU fan 1. Hide the cable down like that. Nice. All right, let's do the RAM, which will go in the second and fourth slot. And there's there's no retention clip here, so it's just the ones at the top. Second and fourth slots have been standard for RAM installation. If you only have two sticks for a long time now, and I think it's the same way with DDR5. This is DDR4. So you just kind of put it in the guides and push down. And you'll hear it kind of clip into place. And what you're looking for is the notch off, slightly off center that matches up with a bit of plastic. Get it in the guides and push down. Came the sticker too. Good. Put this in the motherboard box. All right. M.2 solid state drive. M.2 slots right under here. There's a heat sink that comes with a lot of motherboards. There's another one down here. Okay, yeah, so there's different places here. There's uh, there's a 30 millimeter. I want to say that's, I forget what uh, the length of that is. There's the 80, and then there's, uh, I think it's a 110 here. So I do need to put in a 80 millimeter riser. And this comes with the motherboard, along with the screw, which is in a separate bag. resistance here. Is this not the right riser? It may not be the right riser. I've got this little riser installation tool. So it just kind of fits like that and you get it over it. And then just try and push down and spin this thing on. It fell. Okay. You going? Yeah, it just needs some extra force push down. But wait a minute, that's not right. I think that's the 80. Let's actually look at the. Let's 
and get the other thing. I think I didn't need to put that. Because it's like 30 or 32, 40, I think that's the 60, and I think that's the 80. They do make longer um, M.2 drives, which it looks like this probably is down here. There's probably room for a longer M.2 drive down at the bottom. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, yeah, that did not need to go there. Back in there. But we will need the screw. Okay, so M.2, you typically have a, um, a slot, or a slot, um, slot, not a slot, a missing, what's it called? A notch here on the side, which matches up with a bit of plastic there, and that's how you know how to put it in. So 30 degree angle to the motherboard, you kind of wiggle it in, it kind of stands up like that, and when you push it down, then you can put your screw in. Although... That looks very odd. Let's see what happens when we put the screw in. It's like it's got a post that sticks up further than it needs to. Let's see what happens here. Screw it all the way down, but yeah, then it's got a, it's got some play to it. Oh, well, I'm just dumb. That's where the screw goes in, so you don't need a screw for that one. For this one, it's held down by the heat sink. All right, heat sink over. Yeah, and you see this a lot. It's it's like a peel over a thermal pad that you have to take off, and then yeah, this will right on top like that all right get that one started and we'll go back and do the other one So we didn't need the riser or the screw. Ah, what else? Um, let's go and get the power supply out. Before I put this in the case, I'm going to plug it in and make sure it works. And by works, I just mean that it puts video on the screen here. How do they want you to open this? Ah, it's over here. All right. Safety information. It is uh, G-Skill Z series, yes, it will. I'm doing good. How you doing, Felix? All right. Power cable. I'm going to put in the box. I've already got one. There's some straps and some screws that we can use to secure into the case. Not straps. Those are zip ties, which I do not use. Okay, here's all the the extra cables. It's got the the 24 pin power and the 8 pin CPU power um, always on. And that's pretty typical even with modular power supplies. Let's see what we got here. What do we need? Okay, so this is SATA power. So this would be for um, 
that's added vibes, and um, some fans and cases need those too. I don't think we're going to need those. There's another SATA. See, the uh, the 4000D Airflow, I don't think it has lights. Typically, if, if, a, if a case has lights built into it, you need that. But we don't have SATA drives, and I don't think we're going to need that. All right, so this has got Molex, which is old power, and floppy cable. We don't need that. This is another CPU. Okay, so this motherboard actually has um, an 8-pin and a 4-pin. You don't have to connect them, but if you have the power cables, you might as well. And this is for the graphics card, and this is for the graphics card. For a 3060, I don't think we need more than one of those. Let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. Uh, Michael Perth uh, redacted a message. It, it said something about does it uh, reduce the performance by having it uh, right next to um, where you would have your your graphics card and uh, I believe the answer to that is no. The, uh, the slot here and the graphics card are given different lanes to the CPU. Uh, 24 inch or 24 pin power. There's a little gripper here that goes onto a little notch, a little bit of plastic there. So you can't put it in backwards and when you go to take it off you have to kind of push in on this in order to release it. And then we got 8 pin CPU power. You can break these apart if you only need four. We're going to plug them all in. And this is the same thing. It's got a little uh, bit of plastic there that this grips onto. So you can put it in correctly. And let's go ahead and connect this one. At least to the motherboard. So yeah, you break it apart. And you just plug in the four. And again, this is not necessary. The The idea of having more power going to the CPU is if you're doing some really extreme overclocking, um, it comes in handy just for extra voltage that you can send. But at that point, you really need, you know, like, beyond liquid cooling, you need, uh, like, um, ultra cold, like liquid nitrogen level stuff. Graphics card. So this is PCI Express power for the graphics card. And this will plug in to a spot labeled PCIe or CPU. So we're going to plug into this one. And we can go ahead and plug this in too, even though it's not necessary. Like that. So we got. Yeah, Express Power, let's get the graphics card out. And this is a very reasonably sized uh, graphics card box. Sometimes they're just ridiculously huge. Peels on it. All right, and a little rubber cover over the slot. Well, not the slot, but the thing that that goes into the slot. Let's see, we're going to need HDMI. Pull that off. And this right here is the main reason I put the motherboard on top of a box, because this right here needs to go to the left of the motherboard's edge, and if it 
wasn't on a box, it would bounce or it would uh, go into the table. Okay, so I'm going to see that. You kind of, you can kind of visualize it like that, lay it down, and then it should just go, push. It should just go. It, where aren't you going? Ah, it was slightly out of alignment over here. Down, yes, okay. Yeah, and we just need one eight pin. So it's six plus two, which is stick together, and they're separate like that, so in case your graphics card or whatever device it is only needs six pins, you can use the six. All right. So same thing, this right here grips a piece of plastic, rotate it, and wiggle, woggle it in. There we go. All the way. Good. All right. Main power into the power supply. The switch was already on. Changed my monitor here to HDMI. And we got RGB lights. Now I just need a piece of metal, which I'm going to use a screwdriver to jump the power button pin together, which is this these two guys right here. Spinning, fan spinning, power supply spinning. Let's see if we get video. Still waiting. It's got a LED here. It says 62. 98, 02. These codes like give you, um, if it gets stuck on one of them, uh, you can look it up in the motherboard's manual and it'll tell you what the issue is. Looks like it's reset itself and it's going through more codes. I imagine it's doing memory training. It's trying to figure out what this RAM needs to run at. Codes are gone, still no video. I think it's stopped. Yeah, no codes, no video. All right, let's see if it powers off. So if I touch the power pins together, it should just turn off. Okay, did. And we're turning it back on. We're turning it back on. There we go. Let's see if it does something different. Oh, there's a reset button and a power button right here built on the motherboard too. That's nice. I like this motherboard. It's actually got a um, USB-C um, header on the motherboard, which you don't typically don't get unless you pay a lot of money for a motherboard. And this wasn't very expensive. I think I saw it on Newegg for like 130 bucks. You know what? Y'all are pointing out that I'm a dumbass because I didn't plug in the. Uh, plug in the monitor and yes that would help to get video but we had video the entire time okay it probably won't get video until we reset it again now I'm just gonna hit the reset button on the motherboard and that should get it how many people said yeah okay <laughs> Bane Soul I think was the first one to point out the HDMI yeah there's video yeah, and it's complaining about not having a boot device, which, that's true. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we did it! Okay, let's let's plug in the mouse and keyboard here. And we'll go into the BIOS and make sure it detects the uh, 
the solid state drive and it sees all the RAM. And we should be good to go. All right, mouse and keyboard plugged in. Control Alt Delete to reboot, and I'm gonna press Delete to get it to go into the BIOS. All right, so there's the processor, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Don't see the M.2 on this screen. It's probably just on a different one though. Let's see what, what we got in our tools. And storage configuration, NVMe configuration, there it is. One terabyte, 980 Pro Samsung. Okay, yeah, we're good. I'm just gonna hit the power button on the motherboard. All right, let's take this apart and get it into the case. All right, so here's the part where you, you squeeze this thing right here as you pull. Otherwise, it's locked in there. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze, pull. Squeeze, pull. Show that again. So yeah, see right there? That's what makes it come apart. All right, more supply up and out of the way. Let's go ahead and get these in the motherboard box. This is the mounting hardware for uh, the CPU that we didn't use. Graphics card, there's a little ejection thing right here you have to push down on. So you pull. Graphics card. And the motherboard just set over there. Alright, let's get the case. reaching in here and pulling up and having the box stay with it. Turn this over. Lift up the box. Let's get these sides off. So this is a 4000D Airflow case from Corsair. Two thumb screws, and then you pull right here towards you to get it to pop off. And we'll get the other side too. This, the screws are captive. They don't actually come out. most cases you find all the screws that come with it in a box where you would put a three and a half inch or a two and a half inch drive. Let's see what we got here. Got a strap, another strap, another strap. Extra risers, some washers, tiny screws, some coarse threaded screws, screws for adding fans, and what is this? A couple more captive thumb screws. Hmm, okay. Don't think we need the captive thumb screws. Definitely don't need the zip ties. Put those 
guys in there. Not adding fans. We don't need those. Not sure what those are for. Don't need the. The washers. That's for the power supply. Probably won't need these. We've got some straps built in here that we're going to use to strap stuff down. Although, nah, there's not a place to put a strap there. That goes in the motherboard box. Alright, let's take a look. Alright, so we need risers in the motherboard. Looks like three across the top, three in the middle, three across there, and that's that's pretty standard. What you do is you you look at the motherboard, and there's three across the top, one, two, three across the middle, there's an extra one right here. So we can add a, a riser right there, and then three across the bottom. So we need one extra riser. We'll probably be using these coarse threaded screws. And let's see, we need nine of them. There's ten risers, but one of them has a little bit of a um, uh, a pin that sticks through. So extra riser. Two more. Nine. And I'm just verifying right now that these screws are meant to go in these risers. Some risers in cases, um, instead of the coarse threaded screws, they use um, the fine threaded ones. Let's see if this goes. Hmm, it's actually not wanting to go. Oh, there it goes. Just wasn't aligned right. Okay. So I'm going to use my little nut driver to put in this riser right here. Ah, some resistance. Okay, so I need something to put through this little hole so that I can turn it. If we didn't put a screw here, or a riser, and then a screw through it, it wouldn't be the worst thing. But since it's there, it's it's best to have as much support as the motherboard will allow for. Alright, that's tight. Alright, let's get this laid down. Let's stick this fan cable up and out of the way. motherboard and just stick her in there so all the way to the back and with this case this this there's a pin right here in this riser location where it's gonna come through the motherboard it kind of locks it in place and you just go around and make sure you can see the risers through the hole in the motherboard yeah all good okay just go around and put them in Wow, that was a, a very short screw. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Michael's getting old. Why, because I forgot about uh, HDMI? Anyone of any age can do that, I assure you. Yeah, John uh, pointed out uh, 31, uh, 2133 RAM. That's the default speed. After we uh, upgrade the motherboard's BIOS, we'll go on in there and turn on the DHCP or XMP, whichever it calls it, which will make it run at the, the full speed of the RAM. 
But if we did that right now, after we upgrade the motherboard's BIOS, it would be sent back to, to default, and we'd have to do it again. So there's no point in doing it twice. Run out of space in here on the edges. I think I've I've used an ASRock B550 before. I've always had good results with ASRock motherboards. I I think I have yet to have one, you know, give me give me grief, you know? This one doesn't feel like it wants to go in. It's it's trying to trying to uh, cross thread. What are you doing, screw? Of course it's the last screw I try and put in. There it goes. If it's cross thread, means it's going in sideways. Just generally, what you do is just kind of spin it backwards and try again, and try, try again, and try again, and try to get it to uh, to go in straight. Now I'm going back and I'm actually tightening them down. I didn't tighten down any of the screws before. I just got them started. stuff. Alright, so this, I'm going to come down here and we're going to put it right in there. It's almost certainly a chassis, chassis fan header. If you look at the fans um, cable, there's a little bit of plastic there that matches up with some plastic here. So you can't put them in backwards or wrong, or at least it makes it more difficult to. fan length or fan cable length sometimes you can kind of stick down there like that let's, let's actually do that let's take it through this section of the cooler so we can kind of get it under there like that yeah that'll work and then back in Good. All right. What's next? So we can go ahead and do this one. This has got a chassis fan right here. Let's see. Let's do. I think I can stick this through here. Take it to the back. So that's fans plugged in. Uh, let's let me see. We really just have the power supply to put in, the front cables to run, and then the graphics card to put in. Let's go ahead and run the front cables. So yeah, they come from up here, and it's it's basically the cables that do power, USB, um, sound, reset, that kind of stuff. Down here. 
And one's caught. Alright, so this is front panel audio. Just labeled audio, and there should be a spot right here where we can go up. Yeah, and the HD audio slash AAFP header on the motherboard is here. There's a missing pin. And you can see right there, there's a missing pin on the connector. So you just kind of rotate it to match and in. This is USB-C, which is right here. I'll take this right through there. Turn it. And this only goes in one way. It's kind of difficult to see. Doesn't want to go in that way. I'm going to spin it. And it's in. And the USB. So that was USB-C. This is USB. 3.0, which this has a little bit of plastic right there, which matches up with a notch on the connector. Turn it to match and wiggle. There we go. Right. So these guys are power switch, power LED, and reset. And these go right up through here. Should be a spot to go. Yep, right through up there. That. This down. You can look up the motherboard manual. Usually it's nine pins. It's eight pins, then one by itself. The power LED is the top left two pins. And I find it easier to put that one in first. So it's separated out, negative and positive. You want the positive to be toward the left. So I'm going to turn it like that and plug them in. Reset is the bottom right two, which is there. And power is just above that. And the power and reset buttons, the direction doesn't matter. They don't have, there's no polarity. Right. Let's sit here and pull that uh, through. Yeah. Okay, let's do the power supply. How's everybody doing? Did I have a typo in the description? I'll try and remember to, to fix that later. I don't think I can do it right now. All right, power supply. We've already got all the cables connected. So as long as the uh, the case you have has a um, an air intake at the bottom with a filter, you want the um, the fan to be facing down. Four that came with the power supply. So John stopped using Asus five to ten years ago. I've had I've had quite a few Asus motherboards have problems recently. They were they were really good for a long time. Um, but yeah, um, kind of same here recently. Have run into issues. So let's see. Move this thing around so we can see the screw holes. There's one, two, three, four. And these two I'm just putting in 
to get them started before I tighten them down. And the reason for that is if I were to tighten them down, it could be that one of the other screw holes wasn't aligned correctly, then I'd have to go back, loosen it, and move it around. So that's all in. Tighten down. All right. What is this guy? So that is that's the uh, the four pin that I broke apart. It was two eights I broke apart, and he's going to go up here because that's where the connection is on the motherboard, and that's where the graphics. And here's the other uh, full eight pin CPU, which will go right up there as well. Let's go ahead and get those connected before we move on. I didn't do it this time because the cooler we have is not very big. If you're putting in a really large air cooler that like takes up this entire space, it then makes it difficult to get in here and connect these. So it's a good idea to connect these to the motherboard before you put them into the case. Um, and you just kind of connect them here and then run the cable through that upper corner. Alright, so plug the 8 pin in first. Because I think it'll be easier. And then here's the four pin. Actually, I'm going to use this one. No, I'll use that one. It doesn't matter which of the four you use, they both fit. All right, in. Kind of do that. Push those to the back. All right. Pushing this audio cable under there. Let me get it out of the way. All right, that, that. All right. So the 24 pin, we're going to put right through here, because that's approximately where its connection is. Oop, a little lower, or a little higher. Back through. I'm going to put it in up here. Turn it. This is so close. In and down. Like that. Clean. Uh, and then the graphics will be right here. I'm going to come just below the 24 pin. How you doing? Uh, I've had pretty, pretty good luck with, with Gigabyte as well. Um, MSI I've had pretty good results with as well. The motherboard here is uh, ASRock. Yeah, it's an ASRock B550 Velo something. All right, graphics card. So it's a two slot. There's the slot, so we need to take out this one and this one, these, these two covers. Face plate goes to the left of the motherboard's edge right here, but not on the outside. Just over the slot, push, and it's in. Alright, let's 
stick the six and the two together. Sorry, I bumped the mic. In, good. Push that down. That would be kind of like that. Yeah. And the two thumb screws to put it back in or to hold it down. And these screws you don't want to crazy tighten down. If you go too hard on them, sometimes you can strip out the uh, the hole they're going into. Good, good. Right. Couple of slot covers. All right. Hang on, y'all. Let me let me check and see if he got back to me. This is my cell phone, by the way. I'm having to take it off. <laughs> Look at my texts. Uh... Nope, he has not said. We're gonna go with 11. If he comes back later and says he wants 10, not a big deal. Just reinstall Windows 10 and do the updating the drivers again. That's okay. POV. Yeah, okay. Alright. Mouse and keyboard. Where? Power, video, okay, I'm um, not going to connect network yet, uh, actually I will and then I'll take it away. Uh, that's for Windows 10 and Windows 11 being a pain in the ass insisting on connecting a new copy of Windows to a Microsoft account. All right, power on. And I'm moving the camera to a tripod. All right, here comes video. Yeah, it's probably a complaint again about not having an operating system, yeah, so. Copy of Windows 11 on a flash drive. I'm just going to plug this into the top of the of the case and Control Alt Delete on the keyboard. To reset, and it'll probably just find it and go in. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's go into the BIOS and make sure it's uh, it's set for secure boot and uh, the TPM is turned on, otherwise Windows 11 is not going to let us install. Alright, uh, boot. Um, CSM we're turning off because we don't want to use uh, the legacy install of Windows. We want UEFI. Advanced. Mm, trusted computing. So enabled, that's good. All right, that's enabled. And then where is the secure boot crap? 
it's probably turned on just by default. Ah, here we go, AMD FTPM switch. It's disabled here. All right, well, let's turn that on. Okay, that should be good. Let's exit, saving changes. Okay, and it should boot into Windows 11 installer and be fine. But we'll see. The no name says they recently built a PC, uh, PC and CPU cables from the power supply are bent under extreme pressure. So when the CPU is under load, it makes high pitched noise. I, I wouldn't think those two things are are related. The high pitched noise may be from something else. Uh, someone uh, above says they recently did a build and they're getting a replacement SSD because they believe the, inc uh, the one they have is incompatible with a B650. I I've, I've run into, into a, f a few um, compatibility issues between uh, solid state drives and, uh, and, and computers. Um, it's rare. What, what's the, what was the symptom uh, that makes you think it's incompatible if you're still here? Uh, Grizz, yes, coil wine could be it. So coil wine, yeah, in the power supply, it could also be coil wine on the graphics card, depending on what kind of stress it was under. All right, next. And there's nothing you can do about coil wine. Once it starts happening, it's it's just there. Um, so if you have the opportunity to re return whatever device is doing it, do it and get another one. Install now. All right, we don't have a product key. I'm going to choose Windows 11 Home next. And we can give it a Windows 11 um, product key later. Accept, custom install. There's the drive, one terabyte. I'm just hit next and it'll handle creating the partitions for me. Read something about coil wine. If uh, if if uh, if it sounds like coil wine, um, if if you do a search for coil wine graphics card on YouTube, you'll find lots of examples of the noise it makes. And if, as long as that's what you're hearing, I mean, it's not great, but it's not really a problem as long as it doesn't bother you too much. Some coil wine is very um, very quiet. Um, other times it's really loud, and you know, no one wants to hear it. Oh, is the camera having trouble focusing? Yeah, it it uh, it it tries real hard. Looks like it's okay now. Mm. The the one thing about Asus that I that it, um, that I've always found to be good is their support. When you call them, you don't have to wait very long the people you talk to know what they're talking about and I've, I've uh, had a few things suggested as fixes uh, by ACES support that actually worked so that, that is a, um, a very positive thing about ACES is their support uh, I buy just about everything from Amazon um, all the links uh, to, to the parts are on Amazon. I didn't buy any of these parts. It was bought by the uh, by the client and then brought to me. But I, I did um, get to uh, look over the the parts list to make sure it was pretty, you know, basically okay. You know, good choices and you know, compatible and all that kind of stuff. Uh, how often do I go live and build a PC? Um, it 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 depends on on what computers are brought to me. Uh, sometimes it'll go weeks and sometimes months without uh, parts for a computer being brought to me to, to be put together. Um, I do other live streams occasionally uh, if it makes sense. I tend to only do like mostly purely hardware fixes and builds on here. 
as opposed to like going into someone's computer to clean it up or solve a problem they have because you know you, you can see their you know their usernames and their their file names and it's just it's not cool uh, a new suggests me an APU build I mean the Intel stuff right now is great um, the motherboards are cheaper um, CPUs are, are fantastic the new 13th the generation stuff um, and they all have built-in um, graphics as opposed to the AMD, AMD stuff which uh, the newer AMD stuff yes they're very good but the motherboards are like a hundred bucks more expensive and um, the performance you get Intel versus AMD is is pretty similar for the amount of money you spend although the Intel CPUs are cheaper than AMD CPUs for the same amount of money so if you're going an APU build uh, Intel is is not a bad way to go um, the graphics built into um, AMD CPUs is better for like gaming but um, if you're doing an APU build maybe you probably don't care about gaming so Intel may be the way to go um, the 11 uh, the 13th gen 400 and 500 are both excellent as far as I can see I haven't had them yet but just like watching other tubers talk about it they, they look pretty damn good so this thing is gonna reboot I'm waiting for it to screen go black and I pulled out the uh, the flash drive and it should boot and continue the the Windows setup isn't the motherboards more expensive for Intel um not I don't think so I, I think I think the motherboards are a little bit less expensive um, of course there's there's a variety of, of you know types of motherboards right now um, the the latest generation like uh, Ryzen 7000 series CPUs the motherboards you need for that are quite a bit more expensive for in uh, uh, as compared to Intel hopefully that'll fix itself but I would have hoped that would have fixed itself a month ago and it still hasn't happened they're still, um, I think, a hundred bucks more expensive for, you know, kind of the same level of quality, quality and features. Yeah, it's new, more expensive. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I have I have yet to have a um, a seventh gen um, AMD build brought to me. It hasn't happened yet, and this is a, a previous gen AMD build. But for the money, it's uh, it's good stuff. Gaming on a 22-inch monitor. Yeah, I mean, you can game on a 22-inch monitor. It, it uh, a lot of that depends on how close you sit to it, but also you have to you have to factor in the the resolution. 22-inch monitor. I uh, I don't even know if they make a a 1440p 22-inch um, monitor. I may be wrong about that, but that's so small that you probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference uh, going from like 1080p to 1440p. But again, that depends how far you're sitting from it and how good your vision is also. All right. Let's do next. Yes, on the US, no to the second keyboard. And it's going to get some updates. Hmm. Video card showed artifacts on the monitor today, but now it works normally. What should I do? If the if the graphics card is still in warranty, I would call the manufacturer and ask them about it and see what they say. Um, but artifacts is kind of a, a generic term. Was it was it lines? Was it little dots? Were the dots moving? What were you doing when it happened? Were you gaming? That kind of thing. It's uh, all all things to look at. All right, we're not going to name the device. Okay, so here is where it insists on connecting to a Microsoft account. Um, I'm just going to pull the cable out of the back of it. 
and see if I can get it to go past it without too much difficulty. So Ethernet cable's out. And next, but learn more. I'm trying to get it to just let me put in a user account. type now and it's not responding there's there's nothing to click on that actually works okay we are pressing the power button which should hopefully turn it off turn it back on Okay, so it, it restarted the setup. Or restarted this portion of the setup, put it that way. Okay, so now it's wanting to connect to the internet. And it's not going to let me go by. Here recently what I've been doing is just logging in with m one of my Microsoft accounts, just temporarily. And then going in and creating a, um, a local account and then deleting my Microsoft account that maybe we have to do we try another option though uh, checking for updates again okay so the other way to do it is to um, disable networking from a command prompt we'll, we'll give that a try but I don't think it's gonna work um, th this these newer versions of Windows 11 are a real pain in the ass all right signing in so there's a back button here. Unlock your Microsoft experience, sign in. All right, let's do Shift F11, I think, or Shift F10, Shift F10. And we're gonna do, oh, come on, type. IP config space forward slash. The screen went black because it's, it's updating drivers for the graphics card. Okay, it's back. Release, that kills the internet, oh! Did it just let me go through? No, it relaunched it. Oh wow, I think it <laughs> it broke the GUI. Okay, uh, control shift escape. All right, uh, let's try refreshing or restarting the Explorer, see what that does. All right, there we go. Now, back. Oops, you've lost internet connection. Retry. Yeah, it's not going to let me go through. All right, Shift F10. Oh, come on. Let me do Shift F10. Now it won't let me do the, the command prompt. Oh, it's already there. Okay, good. All right, well, let's give it back an IP address. So we're renewing the IP address. Networks back next. Okay, I gotta I gotta give it a Microsoft account. Hang on a second, y'all. So dumb. It's making me create a, a, a pin number too. All right, we're back. All right. Uh, I leave on location and diagnos diagnostic data. I turn off the rest of the privacy stuff. I'm gonna skip all the extra crap. Skip, skip, skip. 
don't want to connect my Android phone. Don't want Microsoft 360. Don't want OneDrive cloud storage. Don't want Game Pass. And it's checking for more updates. Hi. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Kuka says I use Windows XP. Cool. Hmm. Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Hey Google, stop. Google is so helpful. I use Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, I think I have Windows 10 on all the computers with the exception of the one in the living room that uh, I went ahead and upgraded to Windows 11. And it's it's been fine. The, the user interface is, is quite a bit different. But it's working okay. I've got a GT1030 in the bedroom computer. I don't use it to game on though. Really only game in the living room. And it's got a 2070 Super in it. And it's doing fine. 4K 60 hertz is the, the best that TV can do anyway, so. Doing fine. All right, we're in. Let's go ahead and create a local user account. Um, accounts. Uh, we need other users. Add a user. Don't have the user's sign-in information. I want to add a user without a Microsoft account. There we go, okay. And I don't know what they want their username to be. I'm just gonna do Corsair and no password. Click and change that to administrator. And then we can sign out of my account and sign into their account. Ryzen 3 120 plus a, a GTX 1050 Ti combo. Medium 7s for, for uh, modern games. It, you 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 might be okay with that, um, but you know, as always, you know, if you can pay more, pay more. You'll you'll get more frames. You know, bump that uh, 1050 Ti up to uh, uh, a 3060, like the one in here. You'd be great, but it all depends on how much money you have and how much things are where you're buying. What was it? Or where where are you buying from? What, what country are you in? How much uh, how much money does a, a ten fifty Ti run you? Yeah, Mario also says a RTX thirty sixty is a good choice. An R five thirty six hundred. Uh, is that one of the ones with built in graphics? If so, that would be an okay choice. From Serbia. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know what uh, what things cost in Serbia. Um, but yeah, you, you you pay for you know performance that uh, that you can afford wherever you are. You know, whatever the market is where you're actually buying from. Okay, location diagnostic data. Do the same thing. Alright, we're in. I'm going to go back in and immediately delete my account. Accounts, other users, there's me. 
And that's my email address if y'all want to send me an email. You can also find my email address if you go to um, um, the channel and go to About Me. There's a link there to reveal the email address. All right, deleting that. All right, so start. Actually, just settings, Windows Update, check. I'm right-clicking on Start and going to Device Manager to see what else we got here. Okay, so the, it's not complaining about any other devices, so it, it found drivers for everything, which is good. All right, let's go get Chrome. Start without syncing. Confirm and start. And nite.com. If you, if you don't know nite.com, anything you see here is a free program. You just check what you want. They're all free. I'm just getting Chrome. You click Get Your Nine Night, and you let it run. Make changes, and it will download and install what you wanted. Let's see. I'll clean up this a little bit. Taskbar settings. I'm gonna turn off chat. I'll leave on widgets. I'm gonna put the taskbar in the left position. Let's see. I'm doing a search for hide scroll. Always show scroll bar off on. And that's so whenever you're in something like this that uh, that extends like system, sometimes the, the scroll bar doesn't show up and you have to kind of roll over it to find it. There it's it's always there now. Uh, let's see. BIOS. Let's go get the motherboard BIOS. Did Chrome get installed? Yes, it did. Alright, so start. Chrome, right-clicking on it and pinning it so it stays, and we want a Google search for the motherboard, which is a ASRock Velocita B550. That ought to get it. B550 PG. Yes, that's it. All right, full screen. And we're looking for support for this motherboard. BIOS. Latest version is 2.4. I'm going to click to download that. And there it goes. Let's see what it is right now. If you click start and you type in msinfo32, you get system information. And current version is 2.0. So yeah, we do need to upgrade that. All right, let's plug back in a flash drive just at the top and we're gonna copy this over so we're gonna drag and drop it right on top so that's there so if we click start power restart we can hit delete to go into the BIOS and we'll load the latest BIOS Okay, a 1050 Ti is about 200 euros. That's not a bad price. How, how much is a 3060? You might also want to look at the, uh, the Radeon stuff. The, um, uh, the 6000 series, I think you can get a, a really good graphics card um, for less money. The Radeon stuff just doesn't have all, it doesn't have some of the features that the, that the Nvidia stuff does. And that, that's, a, that's a big part of the buying decision for a lot of people. Uh, Gamer Plays. Does Windows 11 run on i3 7th gen? No. It, it will complain. It won't let you do it. But um, do a Google search for Windows 11 Rufus, and you'll find directions to use the program called Rufus to strip out the, um, the CPU checks from the Windows 11 installer. And at that point, you can install it, and it works. All right, starting to press delete because we are rebooting. An RX 6650 OC for 339 euros. Yeah, that, that's a good deal. And that, that would give you considerably better performance, considerably more performance than the 1050 Ti.
although I don't know what country that is. It's it was bought in euros, but it, just because it's euros doesn't mean you know um, the market's the same in every country. All right, let's go to tools and instant flash. Uh, Oh, please go to CPU configuration to disable the TPM switch before flashing the BIOS. Okay. Advanced CPU and turn off the switch. Okay. Will you let me now? No, I probably have to restart. So exit, save and exit. Yes. And then we go back in. Hopefully it'll let us. When, when, whenever you flash the BIOS, if um, if disk encryption is turned on and it's encrypting the disk, when you flash the BIOS, it will erase the decryption uh, key, which then makes it so you can't decrypt it. Um, and uh, hopefully, you 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 backed up your uh, your decryption key before. Um, one of the advantages. Um, to letting it connect to a Microsoft account if you do uh, disk encryption is that it saves the, the disk decrypt key, uh, the decryption key in your Microsoft account. So if uh, you lose it on the computer, you can go on another computer to your Microsoft account, the security section, and um, get the decryption key. Uh, but we weren't encrypting, so should be fine. And hopefully it wasn't automatically encrypting. Sometimes it will do that. Um, I don't think we gave it enough time to actually encrypt the disk though. All right, back to tools, back to instant flash. Okay, so it, it just automatically read um, the drives it could see. There's the BIOS version 2.4, we're updating it, and we're sure. Okay, and here it's, it, it, can, it can take two minutes to 20 minutes to get this done. And the main important thing is don't turn it off, don't connect anything, don't disconnect anything that's currently plugged in, just let it do its thing. And um, it's normal to turn itself off at some point, turn itself back on, and then take a long time to give the video again. Basically, just don't touch it for a really long time um, until you get video and it says it's done. Hands off. Good coffee. Mm. Tyler, I'm glad your your computer's behaving. Mm. Was it the motherboard, Tyler, that needed replacing? Okay, uh, aside from updating the BIOS, we need to update the graphics card driver and then do some thermal slash stability testing. So we'll do that once we get back into Windows. The computer is really quiet though. The microphone is about, it's less than a foot from the computer. And I don't know if y'all can even hear it. Very pleasant sounding. It'll make more noise once we start uh, testing it, though. Because the fans will need to spin up to keep stuff cool. A 3060 for about 400 euros is probably a good deal. All right, program success, press enter to reboot 
system. I did. Okay, so it turned itself off and now it's turning itself back on. And that's pretty pretty normal for a BIOS update. Need to clean that screen. All right, here comes video. Yeah, okay, good. All right, I'm gonna start pressing delete just to dry and get into the BIOS before it boots into Windows, because I do want to go in and turn on the, um, the DOCP um, to get the RAM at its correct speed. It rebooted again. All right, we're in the BIOS. Okay, so yeah, the RAM's at uh, 2133 megahertz, and it should be capable of running at uh, 3600. Um, let's see, let's, sometimes there's a way to turn it on right here, but there's not on this one. Let's go to OC Tweaker. And uh, let's see, RAM speed, load DOCP, DRAM frequency. Okay, so it was on auto. I'm switching it to XMP 2.0, which is 3600 megahertz at 18 um, nanosecond uh, latency. All right. That also switches the um, the RAM voltage from 1.2 to 1.35. Okay, so exit, exit saving changes. Yes, so that will get the RAM running at full speed. So turn up a little bit here. Put the extra stuff, including the manual, in the manual box. Um, I usually upgrade the BIOS to the latest version before I give it to um, to a client. Um, as long as it's working, um, it's not really required. It's just BIOS upgrades can fix things you don't even realize are wrong, or you don't even you haven't run into just because you haven't run into them yet. But they are issues. So having the latest BIOS, yes, um, I, I I pretty much always do. Um, whenever I'm working on someone's computer. BIOS upgrade failures are extremely rare at this point, and the majority of newer computers have a way to, if the BIOS upgrade fails, to reload the BIOS um, from a flash drive. So, yes, I just about always do. All right, Chrome, Google search for NVIDIA drivers. First one is correct. And let's see, we got a 3000 series. You can choose anything in here. It's a 3060, but it's going to give you the, the right version. Windows 11. Game ready, search. Wow. It got, uh, they got bigger. This is like over 800 megabytes. 813 megabytes. All right, we'll get that downloading. And while we're doing that, let's get hardware info 64 download. And this is going to show us the, um, the temperatures and the uh, the speeds and stuff of the components. Alright, we're gonna extract that because it's a zip file. Run it. I usually do sensors only because that's all I'm interested in. It'll also tell you about the rest of the hardware in your computer. Alright, so there there it is. We don't care about an update. And this is for the in or this is for the NVIDIA drivers. So currently it's running at 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz. RAM is running at 1800 megahertz. You double that to get 3600. That's how it works is double data rate. So it's running at 30, 3600 megahertz. CPU temperature is up to 82 degrees Celsius. How busy are you, CPU? What are you doing? Let's see. I'm right clicking on. Eh, that doesn't work. Uh, 
Control Shift Escape will bring up Task Manager. CPU is at 14%, running at 77 degrees. That's really hot. Huh. All right. NVIDIA driver. Let me see. CPU fans spinning up. Okay, so that while that installs, let's go get the, the CPU um, burning software. So Intel CPU burn on a Google search will usually bring it up. Burn test. Techpowerup.com. It's Intel you know CPU test, but it works on AMD too. Um, download from one of their stuffs and extract it from the zip file and we will run it and you usually have to get an extra component yeah the dotnet framework you just have to click on it and it'll go get it and then it'll run up oh, there goes the graphics card being updated again so that was the uh, the nvidia um, drivers that got installed if we run back here we can see yep it finished so latest nvidia drivers That's weird. Usually searching for required files goes by pretty quick. Uh, we can go get a different CPU burner though. Um, let's go get Prime 95. Prime 95 download. It's the one listed as GIMPs. Click the most recent one. Run it. Or open it. Extract it. Run Prime 95. More info, run anyway. It doesn't recognize Prime 95 uh, as a safe program, but it is. Uh, joint stress test. And let's do maximum power, heat, and stress. All right, so this is going to put all the CPU cores to, to work here. So let's see, 93%. 94, and we'll go back and look at the temps. The temps actually dropped down to 73. So once it got past uh, 80, it looks like it spun the fan up more. So it actually got uh, got a little bit cooler. It's going to go back up to the 80s though, probably as the um, the Prime 95 really gets going. Right now, it's it's not under full stress, but it'll get there. The temperature is high. Um, I don't know that it's it's necessary for them to get a, a better cooler, like a bigger cooler, like a Noxu or a Be Quiet. But because um, whenever you're playing games and just doing stuff, it doesn't fully stress the CPU. So it's going to be well under probably um, 70 degrees uh, when he's actually using the computer, which is okay. Mm, okay, you can get a 3060 for 315 euros. Yeah, that's a, that sounds like a good price. Um, it might be a little bit more expensive um, than other countries around you, but not by a whole lot. If you can if you can pay that uh, pay that money, that would get you significantly better performance than the 1050 Ti. I mean, a lot. Um, we can look that up actually. Let's see. Uh, let's go to, oh, crap, I clicked something I shouldn't have. Go back. Or did I go forward? I lost the stream. There it comes. There's chat, okay. Let's see, let's switch to full cam. No, not full cam, let's center. And let's just look it up. So it's a wrong keyboard. So GTX 1050 Ti versus a, what did we say, um, 6700 XT, was that it? No, 3060, sorry. A RTX 3060, it even filled it in, it knew what I was going to search for. Um, 
Yeah, so you just want to go to one of these user benchmarks or GPU check, one of them. Uh, they, they will all pretty much show you what you need to know. So effective speed in general, it's um, the 3060 is 217% better performing than the, uh, the 1050. So massive jump in performance. You can also put a search for the game you want to play. So if you wanted to play War Zone 2, we got a 1050Ti versus 36Ti in 8 games. And you can just sit here and watch the YouTube video. And it'll show you the frame rates. So the frame rate here is pretty much double. more than double. A little more than double. Oh, that's that's almost that's more than triple on that game. Yeah, so just massively better. I mean, 8 frames per second versus 21 in Red Dead 2. So yeah. Going, um, Wolfie, going from a 3050 to a 3060 is a big jump in performance. So yeah, if you've got the money, that, that, that'd be a good, uh, good thing to go up to. Alright, where are we at here? Let me switch back to POV. Okay, so CPU under just about full stress, and it's at 76 degrees. And the computer's still real quiet. Let's go get something to stress the graphics card. Let's get, um, uh, that's the wrong keyboard, I think. Let's get Heaven Benchmark. Hopefully it'll download pretty quick. Get the Windows download. Yeah, it's already past 10% downloaded. With Bozdar, I mean, um, asking if it should be enough for gaming, it, it depends on so many things. What game, what monitor do you have, what resolution, um, it's, it, it really depends. It comes down to what you want to play and what your monitor can, uh, can actually show you. Because let's, let's say you've got a 1080p monitor where, that uh, runs at 60 hertz, and that's the most it can run at. Well, if, if you get a graphics card that will give you, you know, 200 frames at that, uh, uh, that resolution, you can't see them because your monitor can only do 60. So at that point, you would, uh, you would need to upgrade your monitor. So it, it, a, whole, a whole bunch of depends is, is what it comes down to. Uh, it, would, it would play very well at 1080p resolution. How many frames you get also depends on the game you're playing, though. But if, you, if you've got a, a 1080... Or, um, uh, 1080p monitor that only does 60 hertz, a 3060 will m give you more frames than it can show. Seventy-five hertz, okay. I I would say um, 1080p at seventy-five hertz with a, a 3060, you you you're, you're you're going to be in good shape. Um, it's going to give you more frames than you can see. And at that point, you know, if you if you find it's giving you like 160 frames per second in the game you're playing, then you can go get yourself, a, you know, uh, a 144 hertz monitor.
and that way you can see all the frames. Opening in 11 minutes, wow, the download really slowed down. Temps are at 77. Okay, well, heaven is taking forever to download. Let's go get the furry donut. Let's go get fur mark. Wrong keyboard. Fur mark. There's the fur mark university. Really? It was a suggestion. Fur mark university. All right, yeah, let's get fur mark. And where's the download? Download. All right, let me get that going. Opening in 10 minutes, 12 minutes? What happened to the internet? Okay, it got done. Oh, it's the Unigen that's still done. Taking a long time. Internet's fine. Next. No release notes. Launch it. There it is. Stress test. Okay. Furry donut. All right, so this is running at basically 200 frames per second. There's the temperature, 64. That'll probably go up into the 70s, but that's good. So the, C uh, the, the graphics card fan spun up a little bit more, but not much. So the system's making a little bit more noise, but it's still very quiet. And the noise it's making is pleasant. It's not high-pitched. It's just kind of like air-moving noises. I'm just going to cancel the, the, the Heaven download. There's no point. Yeah, but this is good. Um, what I'll do is I'll just let it... sit here and run under stress, make sure it stays stable, and then they can come pick it up. Or if they tell me that, oh, I actually wanted Windows 10, then I'll reinstall Windows 10 and re-update the driver. It's not a big deal. Afterburner will show repeat real CPU temp. Yeah, after, Afterburner's, um, uh, if, if, if you don't know, um, if anyone doesn't know, that's uh, a program that's used for overclocking um, graphics cards. <laughs> it, it's finally downloading the, uh, uh, the .NET stuff I told you to do a long time ago. I guess the Microsoft servers are having trouble too. Or maybe it's just a little, little priority. What kind of games do you play, Bozadar? Yeah, the higher the frame rate and the higher the more frames you can see, the smoother the game will be, basically, is what it comes down to. Look at that furry donut go. 69 degrees Celsius on the CPU, or sorry, the GPU. I imagine they'll go a little higher, but not far. Mm. Well, y'all, I think I'll cut the stream there. Um, how long have we been going? An hour and 50 minutes. That's a good stream time. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let this sit here and stress test for at least a couple hours. Then I'll put the case sides on and they can come pick it up. Again, unless they want Windows 10 and then I'll do that. 
Oh, okay. Need for Speed series. Huh. Okay. Cool. I I I like Need for Speed, the um uh the one that came out in the early two thousands. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but yeah, that was a fun game. Uh I bought a RTX 3050 Ti laptop. It won't bother me in games, right? I'm not sure what you're what you're saying there. That's a good good graphics chip in a in a laptop, though. Most wanted. Yes, that sounds right. Uh huh. The music from that is insane. <laughs> Doom 1998. <laughs> All right, but yeah, um, <laughs> undercover. I I may still have that on disc somewhere. Yeah. All right, but uh, yeah, thanks for everybody coming, hanging out, and uh, being so helpful. I, I don't know if it, it, there was at least three or four people that pointed out that I didn't have HDMI connected at the beginning, and that's why there was no video. That's uh, that's good stuff. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. Have a good rest of your day. Um, happy New Year. And uh, yeah, thank you.